welcome to Destination San Diego, brought to you by Cox Communications and the San Diego Tourism Authority. Whether you're visiting for the first time or you're a native, there's no doubt that San Diego is pretty close to paradise. Boasting perpetually sunny skies, a majestic coastline, and picturesque mountains, San Diego's regions are so unique and diverse there are plenty of places to discover something new. Just west of downtown San Diego sits Point Loma. This peninsula jutting out into the sea might seem like land's end for San Diego. But as the site where San Diego was first discovered by European explorers, it might be more appropriate to consider it as the starting point for your exploration of San Diego, with a voyage around Point Loma and Liberty Station. Point Loma has played a big role in San Diego's history. For decades, the Naval Training Center in Point Loma drew men and women from around the country to San Diego to train for military service. Today, Point Loma still draws families to the same area, but not for military service. Now called NTC at Liberty Station, this former naval base has become a blossoming arts and culture district. Liberty Station is home to great art galleries, restaurants, performing arts companies, and much more, making it a destination the whole family will love. So bring the kids and join me to discover what makes Point Loma one of San Diego's best arts and culture districts. With 28 acres of renovated Spanish Revival architecture, NTC at Liberty Station is the perfect place to learn about Point Loma's history, which you can discover at the Point Loma Legacy Exhibit. The exhibit tells the story of Point Loma's role as a gateway to San Diego. In the historic barracks, you'll find an exhibit displaying the story of life as a naval training recruit. Well, you can certainly, as you walk around, you'll see that history permeates here. All of our buildings in the historic district we're inspired by Bertram Goodhue, who did the uh, buildings in Balboa Park. But it's what's going on inside the buildings that really is enjoyable. You've got artists in barracks buildings where sailors used to sleep. You now have artists making art. From painting and photography to the art of textiles, there's something for just about every kind of art lover, young and old. In uh, one of the command school buildings, you've got the, the dance companies. And the way our architects designed the buildings or repurposed the buildings is you can actually see the rehearsals going on while the dancers are working inside the studios. Several dance companies, including Malashock Dance, rehearse and offer classes here. Drop in for a class or to find out when and where their companies will be performing next. At NTC at Liberty Station, you can also explore one of San Diego's most popular crafts, craft beer. Let's meet with Steve Robbins to learn more about Stone Brewing Company's World Bistro and Gardens at Liberty Station. So Steve, this place is amazing. It's not just a restaurant, it's not just a brewery. There's tons of stuff going on here. What all will people find when they come to Stone's World Bistro and Garden here? I prefer to answer the question, what won't they find here? This being the largest under roof restaurant in all of San Diego County, people have a certain expectation when they walk in the door. And the things that we have here are great for parents, they're great for families, they're great for everybody from our movie nights that we have on Tuesday nights where you can go out there and enjoy a great movie out there on the movie pad, the beers for the parents, beautiful, beautiful grounds for people to walk around on. And if you want to be playful, we've got the bocce ball court set up so you can play around as well. After dinner, don't leave NTC at Liberty Station without a little shopping first. Take home some edible art from She Chocolat. Their hand-molded chocolate creations use only the best ingredients and are a delight to see and taste. For fantastic home decor, check out Scout, an eclectic shop full of artful furniture and accessories. From innovative dance and history lessons to artisanal beer and chocolate, NTC at Liberty Station offers something for the whole family. For more ideas on what to see and do at Liberty Station, visit our website, forestd.com, and check out the Destination San Diego page. We'll be right back. Stop chasing wonder while the day brings up becomes a sunrise and we'll see the sunset coasting by the ocean with some music turn it up we got the whole night 360 days of this ooh, 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 ooh. all arms open wide for memories we'll make here that always make you smile. 
happiness is calling at San Diego.org. Welcome back. San Diego is a leader in the high-tech and biotech fields and is celebrated as one of the country's smartest cities. But along with our high-tech future, our region also boasts a fascinating past. Jack Gates shares with us a little history of the Point Loma Lighthouse. From 1874, this is the oldest photo of the old Point Loma Lighthouse. And from then to now, the restored landmark has become a symbol of this city. In many, many ways, it is the thing that people think of when they think of San Diego. The Point Loma Lighthouse opened in 1855, and Assistant Keeper's home was added. Here's that same shot now, the centerpiece of Point Loma's Cabrillo National Monument. Park historian Bob Munson says the lighthouse's illuminating beam first guided ships into the harbor during this state's gold rush. California is a very dangerous coast, and they were losing ships right and left. For nearly 20 years, Robert Israel and his wife were the government's lighthouse keepers. And the one rule that could get you fired if you didn't follow it was, without fail, that light will be kept burning brightly from sunset to sunrise every night. Their living quarters are recreated in the lighthouse. They had to climb the tower every night to light the oil wicks. These people had an incredible sense of dedication, their sense of responsibility. This was a 24-7 job. There were no days off. There was no sick leave. And back then, in the late 1800s, it was desolate and lonely out on Point Loma. Today, the lighthouse is one of San Diego's biggest attractions. Now, the real gem of this whole thing, and we do, we call it a half-ton piece of jewelry, is the lens. The five-foot-tall hand-ground lens is made up of 234 prisms. The lens magnified the oil flame more than 10,000 times, sending out a beam 30 miles to sea. But the lighthouse on top of Point Loma was socked in by fog three months out of the year. Well. You can't see a lighthouse that's enveloped in fog, and that's what ultimately put this one out of business. In 1891, the lighthouse closed for good. Then it sat vacant and was vandalized over the years. Now you can see how much went into the restoration. In the early 1900s, people still drove up to the abandoned lighthouse. But what a difference between then and now. In the 1930s, the area became a national park and the lighthouse was restored with lush landscaping. Since then, the plan was to restore the area to its original look. We had to you know, begin to take this whole hilltop back to the way it actually looked in 1887. And now, it is like stepping back in time. There are not that many landmarks as old as the old Point Loma Lighthouse here. But even after all these years, it remains a present day icon of San Diego. You know, how many places can you see in San Diego that use it as part of their logo or in their advertising or in signs and so forth? An enduring and cherished piece of history. That was then, and this is now. There is always something new to learn about San Diego's history. The Point Loma Lighthouse provides one of my favorite viewpoints of San Diego. One of the many sights you'll see from up there is the community of Ocean Beach. Jack Gates takes us back in time to when OB was quite a San Diego wonderland. This is Newport Avenue in Ocean Beach in 1968 looking east. From then to now, Ocean Beach hasn't changed that much still a one-of-a-kind place. Ocean Beach is Ocean Beach. It's an attitude, not an address. Two square miles surrounded by reality. Pat James with the Ocean Beach Historical Society says the reality of OB started back in 1888 when developers built the Cliff House Hotel to start a beach community. 
Now, where that hotel stood and eventually burned, there are cottages representing the bona fide beach town. It's pretty amazing that it's been able to maintain its character, and that's one thing that we really strive for. Newport Avenue here in 1943 has always been Main Street of Ocean Beach. Dissolved to that same angle now, Newport Avenue is still the hub, but storefronts are different. For decades, the Strand Theater on Newport was a popular attraction. Now, the Strand Theater building is the Wings Beachwear store. Where the Piggly Wiggly meat market stood, now at Newport and Bacon is the Newport Farms Market. OB has always had something for everybody. That's one of the reasons that attracted me to Ocean Beach was you didn't feel like you needed to fit in, you just fit in. And that laid back lifestyle still is a holdover, many say, from the 60s. But long, long before the counterculture in Ocean Beach, there was the Wonderland Amusement Park. Amazingly, there are a lot of people that that don't know about it. Developers opened Wonderland in 1913. With a huge roller coaster, it was the Coney Island of the West Coast, even with a zoo and monkey land. Wonderland was on the beach near Abbott and Voltaire Streets then, and now that same view looks like this. The amusement park had a grand facade at the Abbott Street main entrance. That Abbott Street corner now has many apartment entrances. But Wonderland in 1916, after only three years, was washed away by high ocean tides and river flooding. Where Wonderland once stood, now it's just a memory. There's nothing left. Or is there? Look closely at the entrance at the two office buildings on each side of the towers. After the flooding, these two buildings were salvaged. But to where? Well, those two buildings today are here one on the left and one on the right. The two office buildings were moved a block away, joined together as apartments, and looked like this then in 1970. Now the renovated apartments are surrounded by trees. Developer Tony De Garcia, who was raised in the apartments in the 40s, came back, bought the apartments in 98, and saved the only remnants of Wonderland. It makes me feel really good, and I'm going to do everything that I can to preserve it and make sure that uh, Ocean Beach will always have a part of Wonderland. But some things are gone forever, like the 1923 Ocean Beach trolley at Voltaire and Bacon. That same intersection now hosts a car wash. And watch how OB grew. This intersection at Santa Cruz and Froud Street now is filled with homes overlooking Ocean Beach a community trying to balance progress and the past. I think the, the less it changes, the, the better off we'll be because people can really see what a authentic California beach town looked like. We hope you've enjoyed learning a little something about San Diego's history. And we'll be back in a minute to show you more exciting ways to explore San Diego. Stop chasing wonder while the day brings up it comes a sunrise and we'll see the sunset coasting by the ocean with some music turn it up we got the whole night 360 days of this ooh, ooh. Welcome back. One of the best ways to explore a new place is to get tips from the locals. From the surf to the city and everywhere in between, our local aficionados can give you the inside scoop on San Diego. So listen up because Beer Geek and co-founder of Stone Brewing Company, Greg Cook, is going to share his thoughts on San Diego's booming craft beer scene and the best way to taste them all. Hi. I'm Aaron Chang. Hey, I'm Ram Machado. Hi, I'm Yahya Ling. Hey, I'm Rick Schwartz. Hi, I'm Tina Mickelson. I'm Greg Cook. Hola, soy Marcela Valladolid. And we're your guides to the good stuff. San Diego has the most laid back, sunny, amazing vibe that you could ever imagine. A great style of life, a great 
taste of life. I wake up every day and I open my blinds to see the ocean and I just go, wow, this is it's an amazing place. People are very warm, very caring, and they are open-minded. Everyone is very accepting and it's not what you look like, it's how friendly you are and that's the vibe of San Diego, that's why I love it here. Vitamin D is really important to being happy. <laughs> this is January. <laughs> it's very easy to find inspiration in a place as beautiful and as laid back and as, as perfect as this. You know, we have such a beautiful beach. You have some of the great music, great culture and museum, and plus more. I think there's just a little bit for everyone in San Diego. San Diego is really coming of age. There's so many things going on here. It's now very difficult to keep abreast of everything. I get to discover new, really cool stuff every day. It depends on what you like around here. That's so beautiful that you can have the choice. Yeah, well, look around, man. There's like people walking, running, biking. We have so much to offer, and people are so active and alive and out there doing it. San Diego's happy, and happiness is contagious. I'm Greg Cook, and I'm your guide to the good stuff. Because of the way I feel about beer is why I'm in the beer business. And because of the way I feel about beer, I know how awesome it is to tour around and see all the great breweries we have here. I always recommend hire one of the companies, get in one of the, the, the beer tour buses. We have a variety of companies that are specifically designed to just take you around so you don't have to worry about driving and get you the inside version and the inside vision of some of these breweries. We have a few to choose from. There's Brewery Tours of San Diego, there's Brew Hop, and uh, there's a, a number of others, and people love it. We have tours come by all the time. They're happy. When they, when they come in the door, they're happy. And it's not just because they're drinking beer, but they're happy because they get to see the inside view of San Diego Brewing. When we started Stone Brewing Company, Craft beer wasn't popular, it wasn't liked. None of the bars wanted to carry our beer. No wholesalers wanted to carry our beer. But I still saw this vision where one day this would be lauded. You know, people would seek it out. And now San Diego is considered a mecca. We're looked at as being the leading destination in the world for beer. Ready to go on a little bit of a tour? Yeah. Okay, now how long do you got? We have a lot of beers. <laughs> We have all day. That is the perfect answer. <laughs> the scene just filled. It's a cornucopia of creativity, character, variety, with in excess of 80 small breweries. Many of them are doing incredibly unique, specialized, creative things that nobody else does. And we have some amazingly talented brewers that are at all these different breweries around San Diego. Uh, Lost Abbey, Pizza Port Brewing, Ale Smith Brewing, uh, the guys at Society, our friends at Ballast Point. It's even the smallest guy, like, like you know, automatic brewing. And it's, there's so much to be discovered. But you don't have to worry if you're not a beer geek like I am and so many of us are, that's fine. I'm, I'm a beer geek, so you don't have to be. Now there's a man I'll take beer tasting advice from. Stay tuned, we'll be right back to share more of San Diego. Don't stop chasing wonder while the day brings up it comes a sunrise and we'll see the sunset coasting by the ocean with some music turn it up we got the whole night 360 days of this ooh, ooh. Happiness is calling at San Diego.org. Welcome back. There are few scenes in San Diego as iconic as Pacific Beach's Crystal Pier. But do you know how the cottages on the pier came to be? Jack Gates shows us the history of Crystal Pier. Crystal Pier in Pacific Beach, where you can sleep in cottages over the ocean, is an iconic image in San Diego. It's one of the two or three landmarks. I mean, when you think of Pacific Beach, you think of Crystal Pier. Pacific Beach historian John Fry says the pier and its grand entrance opened in 1927, more than 80 years ago. And from then to now, that pier entrance remains renovated and remodeled. But why is it called the Crystal Pier? 
Blackbeard may have came and dug some crystals and buried them here. Because the pier is built on crystal clean water. It was named after Crystal Gale. And, uh, <laughs> is that a close? Not even. Let's go back. This was the pier dedication in 1926, before the pier was even complete. Here's the same angle of that picture now, but how things have changed. Back in the 20s, landowner Earl Taylor and developers wanted to increase interest in beach property, so Fry said they hired builder Ernest Pickering. I think Pickering had built some of the piers in LA and they enticed him down here. So they came up with the Pickering's Pleasure Pier. Opened in 1927, the pier had a midway and amusement rides. And at the end of the pier, look closely, a grand ballroom, the Crystal Ballroom, named because of a huge crystal ball chandelier inside. The Crystal Ballroom is a mystery because most people don't know that was ever there. What happened to the Crystal Ballroom? It's gone now, obviously. It seems from day one when the pier opened, the structure rocked and swayed because of the unsteady wood pilings. And the poor guy who had invested in it went down and discovered that it was full of termites or marine weevils. He was suing the people that provided the pilings. They had not creosoted them. The unstable pier and Crystal Ballroom were condemned, torn down, and 10 years of lawsuits followed. But the Crystal name survived. A rebuilt and remodeled Crystal Pier reopened in 1936 with its Crystal Cottages, an auto court for travelers up the coast then. Now those cottages still remain the most unique feature of Crystal Pier with those curious cutouts on the shutters, like Mickey Mouse. Most interesting thing about the cottages that comes to mind is, is, is an urban legend that some of the cutouts were done by Disney artists out there. In the 1960s, the pier again was renovated and stood straight and true through the 70s. But in January 1983, the pier went through another renovation. This one caused by Mother Nature and a huge winter storm. Storm waves of 83 ripped 240 feet off the end of the pier but the city replaced the lost section, adding a sturdier, raised, and widened deck. For 80 years, the Crystal Pier has been a survivor. I think it's gonna continue on. All this, it's, it, everything else is changing around it, and uh, it's still the centerpiece of, of all that's beautiful here on the coast. But that was always the idea for the Crystal Pier then and now. What a fun place to spend a night in Pacific Beach. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Destination San Diego and that we've inspired you to go exploring in your own backyard. You can see all these stories and get more information on our website, forestd.com, on the Destination San Diego page. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.